Hi, I'm Epoch, and I have just spent way too much time driving around in the new map that was introduced in Project Zomboids, Build 41 Multiplayer. Now, if you haven't installed it just yet, I have a video on it, and if you don't know how to reach, I'm probably going to mispronounce this again, but I think Louisville? They told me in the comments of the last video how I should pronounce it, I'm still not sure if I'm doing it correctly, so I apologize already. But either way, so if you don't know how to get there, just check my video in the description down below or I will link it in the end of the video. So I actually found six really ideal base locations in this new city. So we're just going to run them down really quickly and then I will show you also on the map where you can find them. Now, of course, spoilers are going to be in this video, so I will try to keep them just isolated to this specific building each time. So let's get started. Now, first off, we have Phil's Fine and Fair Pawn Shop. Now, a pawn shop is pretty much a classic stop in a zombie movie, and this is the perfect one for your project zombie playthrough. Now, first off, the front is reinforced. The side has a tall fence making it secure up the wazoo. We only have one part behind the building that isn't closed off, but by placing a car there, it will be quite protected. Now, inside on the ground floor, we have tons of shelves to loot and furniture to disassemble. To a staircase outside, we can reach the two apartments upstairs. They are fully furnished, bedrooms, kitchens, bathrooms, everything you want. Now this building has it all and it's just located in the middle of the shopping part of town. So it's a great location overall, as long as you can secure the back part of it. Next up, we got the Sunset Pines Funeral Home. Now granted, the funeral home doesn't immediately scream perfect base location, especially with it having tons of windows and doors, but it has potential if you put the work in. Now it has tons of furniture to disassemble, it has operations rooms, which actually may spawn specific medical supplies. On the ground floor in the back, there is also a fridge you can use. And upstairs, we have a few metal beds and a water cooler. Now, if you can find a sledgehammer, you can destroy the stairs and use a sheet rope to get up there. But my favorite part of it are the loads of stores right next to it. There is a survival store right next to it, and a little further you've got tons of other stores. Now, just in this little street, you can find everything you'll need to survive. On top of that, you have a gas station just two blocks to your north. It may not be the ideal starting base, but it can end up being a really good one if you put in the work. I can't deny it, I like making my base in the fire station. Now, this fire station is southeast of the city, way at the outskirts. It's quite isolated compared to the other bases I talked about, so you will have less zombies. The backyard is fenced off and has only two unprotected windows and one door at the front. You can find quite a few lockers downstairs for access to firemen uniforms and a garage with possible tool spawns. Upstairs you have a small apartment with a stove, fridge, TV, bathroom and beds. The easy access to the roof also makes it the perfect place to place your generator. And to your north and west, you have tons of houses with garages offering tons of food, drinks, and tools if needed. It's a great beginner-friendly starter base if you need one in this corner of the map. And next up, we have the used storage. Once again, a completely fenced off location on all sides but the entrance. If you can close it off with a car, you will be golden. You can even use a few of the cars that you can find in the parking lot, as long as you can get them going. Now, granted, I can't deny that there won't be a TV or a bed at this location, probably not much food either, but it makes up for that in one simple way. There are dozens of lockers you can break into for supplies. I mean, the location speaks for itself. It's secure, offers you supplies to last a lifetime or at least a playthrough. You just can't go wrong with this one. I added this industrial lot on the list for two simple reasons. It's completely fenced off, so we don't have to worry about the undead at all. On top of that, the place is in the middle of the shopping district. Of course, it doesn't offer as many materials as I would like it to, but I believe this is going to be the one that you want for a multiplayer server. It has loads of space, so you can create as many rooms inside as you want. You can create a garden on the roof, you can place your cars on the parking lot or right outside. I mean, the building is secure, well situated and just a blank canvas. So just try it out and go nuts with it. I'm not sure how to call this one, but I believe it's meant to be a riding school. Now it's a circular building with stables on the outer part of the building and horse training grounds around it. Now on the inside of the building we got what seems to be an armory, two storage rooms, some beds, bedrooms and a welcoming area. 
Now we also got some kind of farmhouse outside. I know what you're thinking. This place doesn't exactly scream base material, but I just wanted to add it to the list for the very simple reason. It's the only building in the central park area in the middle of the city. I mean, if you want to be in the woods, but also be in the middle of the city, this is perfect. It's secluded, but really close to the city. If you walk a little bit south, you will find a great parking lot to store your cars. This location as base setup might be just crazy enough to work. But there we go. Those were my six ideal base locations for Louisville. I'm going with Louisville. I'm not sure. But I hope you found this useful. And if you have any more base locations in mind, please share them in the comments down below. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.